competition on the stage. But uh, we have a student who has very uh, wonderfully volunteered to have instantaneous uh, interpretation. So for those who need it, uh, please gather around her or sit around her. Uh, can you raise your hand? Okay. speaking in English and then the uh, rest will be in Cantonese. I hope uh, you can uh, understand. Uh, we only have an hour and 15 minutes so uh, we will not uh, waste time on uh, other uh, things. Hello, 跨院校的老師和教職員和一些 尊嚴之戰 這個是香港駐上學院,甚至整個教育界會逐漸被鼓規管,逐漸被政治去干擾的一個很大的問題。我們有兩位嘉賓,講者,有兩位都是在香港大學的同事。我們第一位是Professor O'Leary,是Jim。Uh, so if you do not want to be uh, on the screen, uh, you can also choose to sit a little bit at, uh, at the back. Okay? <laughs> How many academics does it take to make a microphone work? <coughs> Quite a few. Uh, welcome everybody, I'm very happy to be talking here today. Um, I don't know if people can hear me, but the... Well, I shall do my best. The topic of today's forum is, is academic freedom at risk? <coughs> I think there's no doubt that academic freedom is at risk. Well, what we have to ask is why and how is it at risk? What is the nature of the risk? Academic freedom rests on institutional autonomy. You cannot have academic freedom without sufficient and appropriate institutional autonomy. But the institutional autonomy of the universities in Hong Kong has always been compromised, at least virtually compromised, potentially compromised, by the fact that the chief executive of Hong Kong is the chancellor of all the universities in Hong Kong. 
the fact that the political leader of the city is chancellor, is the highest officer of all the universities, is itself already gives us the potential for the infringement of academic freedom. There have, of course, in the last 10, 15 years been some very high-profile cases in which there was very direct political undermining of academic freedom. But more recently, I think what we're seeing is a, is a more widespread, more subtle, and in a way much more sustained undermining of autonomy and therefore threat to academic freedom. And basically that has happened, of course, since the events of last year, since the Occupy movement. Um, those are events that have brought, in particular, this university, but also the, all the other universities in Hong Kong, um, has brought them in line for a lot of political attention, let's say. So what we've been seeing recently at Hong Kong University, especially, are events which I think any reasonable person could only interpret or can only understand as being the effect of an undermining of the institutional autonomy of the university. And as soon as institutional autonomy is undermined, there is, as I said, a risk to academic freedom. Whether or not there are any specific cases yet that one could point to where academic freedom has been infringed, nonetheless, the risk is there, the threat is there, and it is very real. And there is already, and if a, is already having, I think, a chilling effect on academic staff at Hong Kong University and also at other universities in Hong Kong. I want to quote for you an, an email that the Vice Chancellor and President, Professor Peter Matheson, sent to all staff of the university on October 2nd. He, wanted to, he said he wanted to reassure us, if reassurance was necessary, that academic freedom is a cherished, protected, and safe value of the university. Let me quote, he said he wanted to assure us that Hong Kong University is a place where academic freedom is cherished and protected, where academic staff are encouraged to pursue whatever subjects their interests dictate, irrespective of how controversial they may be, and that all assessments of credentials and performance will be based on academic merit according to internationally recognized standards. Now, Peter Matheson wanted to reassure us with this statement. Is it reassuring? Well, yes, it is reassuring in one way and also not in another way. It is definitely reassuring that the president of the university speaks out in favor of, speaks out in support of the core value of academic freedom. But the description he gives of academic freedom being safe, actually, event, recent events and even events before he wrote the email would seem to give the lie to some of that. He says, people can pursue their interests irrespective of how controversial they may be. Well, we have seen one person who was deemed to be very controversial, whose interests were not protected by, as a result of the controversial nature, supposedly, of what he was doing. He says that all assessments of credential and performance will be based on academic merit according to internationally recognized standards. And again, we've seen a very clear example of how an, appoint an appointment to the position of vice president of the university, it seems pretty clearly, was not based on international standards of academic merit. So even according to Peter Matheson's own defense of academic freedom, it seems that that is already seriously being undermined. So there is a risk. What does one do in the face of a risk? Well, the first thing you do is you prepare for it and you try to avert the risk. You try to make sure it doesn't actually happen. There are some people today who say, look, academic freedom is safe. What's all the fuss? Well, really, at the very least, the fuss is that we don't want to hang around waiting until there are more and more blatant examples of academic freedom being undermined. We need to take action now to speak out in favor of academic freedom. And one step in doing that is that we need to speak out in favor of the autonomy of the university, institutional autonomy. Now, of course, institutional autonomy is not absolute. Hong Kong University is a publicly funded institution. The Hong Kong public have a very legitimate right to have an interest in what is happening at the university. Hong Kong U Council has a very legitimate right and duty of oversight over certain things that happen at the university. But that must be done in a way which is not, does not appear to be politically motivated. It must be done in a way that, in which the academic freedom is supported at the university. 
who should, who should be doing this? Who should be attempting to revert that risk? Well, basically, I think there are three groups of people who need to do that. On the one hand, we have the staff of the current academic and non-academic staff of Hong Kong University. As some of you probably know, I recently was one of the founders of a group called HKU Vigilance, which is a group which is set up for staff, by staff, in order to advocate for institutional autonomy, academic freedom, and very importantly, for review of the governance structure of Hong Kong U. The second group of people who have to be involved, of course, are the students. Current students, both undergraduate and postgraduate of the university, we know have been very active in speaking out in favor of defend defending the University of Hong Kong. The third group of people is, of course, the alumni of the university. Um, the alumni have also been very effective in speaking out and getting public interest in this issue. Those three groups come together in an organization called Hong Kong U Convocation. Convocation is made up of all staff, all students, and all alumni of the university. We saw an extraordinary general meeting of Convocation on September 1st, in which more than 9,000 people voted. There will be another extraordinary general meeting of Convocation towards the end of November. There are approximately, well not approximately, there are more than 100,000 members of Hong Kong U Convocation. The next extraordinary general meeting of Convocation, we want to have more than 10,000 people, more than 9,000 as we were last time, participating in it. Because this is a very significant group of people in Hong Kong society. They have a very loud voice if they choose to make use of it. Use of it. I think in the overall long-term objective for all of these groups has to be review of the governance of the university. In particular, the number one priority has to be removal of the chief executive as, as chancellor of the universities in Hong Kong. It can no longer be, it's no longer acceptable that the chief executive can be chancellor of the university. I think that should be the aim, the ultimate aim of those three groups coming together to defend the university, defend its autonomy, and defend academic freedom. Thank you very much.